I cannot even begin to describe you the huge impact that my brand photos had the first time I went on a brand photo shoot. Despite feeling horrified when I first saw my photos and then having to come to terms with, yes, that is actually how I look, I bravely started using those photos and magic started to happen. People started to recognize me at events. People started to feel like they knew me when they met me at an event I was running at. People started to feel like they knew who I was and started to feel like they could relate to me more and would call me by my name instead of talking about the person that worked at Identify. Brand photos have a power to help us build a bridge between us and the viewer that isn't video, that isn't you just rocking up without your makeup and your hair not done, which I also do on a frequent basis. And they give you an opportunity to really push your brand in a way that is authentic, true, but also looks bloody awesome. Today, we're joined by Kate Thomas, who is a brand photography photographer based in Manawatu. She's also one of my clients and one of the hardest working people I know and you're not going to believe what her hobby is that she does in her lunch hours. I managed to get her to confess it to you and she's going to be deeply embarrassed. I put this in here, but you need to listen because it's freaking hilarious. I'm Rachel Claver. This is, I'm the host of Mifit Marketing and I'm really looking forward to you listening to the show. If you want to talk about anything in here, please do come and be part of our Facebook group, Mifit Marketing. And if you're in New Zealand, come and check out one of our free content marketing strategy sessions around New Zealand. They're all over the place. Go and Google on Eventbrite for, or go and search on Eventbrite for Identify Marketing and you'll see them there. Free content strategy marketing workshops across New Zealand that you can come to during 2023. Let's get started talking to Kate. Welcome, this is Mipit Marketing and I am your host, Rachel Claver. I love helping small business owners become more confident and more capable with their marketing. So this podcast is all here to help you do just that. It's me and the help of some great guests helping you learn new skills, new strategies and ideas. Let's jump in and get started. Hi, and welcome to the Map It Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Claver, and I'm so excited today to have our guest today, Kate Thomas. She's a photographer. She's actually a photographer who does amazing photos across a whole lot of different areas, mainly equine. She's got an amazing um, background in, in horse photography. She's also done a lot of, uh, you know, portraiture and family shoots in the past. But we have her here today to talk out to us about brand photography for small business owners, because of course, this is a marketing podcast. Before she does that, and before we get her to introduce herself, please do come and be part of the Map It Marketing podcast, uh, Map It Marketing podcast, Map It Marketing Facebook group. You, there'll be a link in the show notes. You can ask questions about today or any other episode in there. Plus, if you're a New Zealander, please go to Eventbrite and Google Identify Marketing because I have free content strategy workshops all over New Zealand this year. Um, from the tip of the top all the way down to Invercargill. Um, and if you don't see my space here, a space that you want to be and that you live, come and flick me a note and we'll see what we can do and see if we can come to your um, your city or your community. Right, without further ado, Kate, welcome. Hi, hi Rachel, how are you? I am very good. Now, I forgot to say that you are also someone who's who has been and is currently a client. And um, one of the things I just want to say about Kate before she starts to make her blush and make her feel really awkward about talking on this podcast is she is so hard working. She just, you know, she when I was working with you, Kate, you just I'd give you a task to do. You'd come back and you'd do that. And you're kind of like super geeked out into the next stage. And you're so excited. And, you know, for you, you saw quite a lot of results quite quickly but it's because you work so hard yeah I, I I just think you have to make use of that time while you know while I'm with you and so I just but I, I I'm like that I am a hard worker whether it's you know with the horses on the farm or in my business it's just head down bum up and and I think if you really want to push your business forward um, if you are really serious then you will dig deep yeah, because yeah, I'm a huge believer in not working nights and weekends. And I know that you also have really good boundaries around some of those things as well. Um, you know, your Wednesday day out for you and those sort of things. But I do think that there are times in our business where we do have to sometimes push a harder push for a short period of time to get those results. I'm imagining you did a few weekends and nights and stuff. To yeah, get stuff done. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think you, you know, and 
there are times where you do have to to forego some family time. I mean, during during those last few sessions with you, it was pretty full on. Um, and I I think I slept for, for two days afterwards. I mean, that's the beauty of being, being in business for yourself. I don't think I'm going to use that as an official testimonial. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel was so exhausting. I slept for two days afterwards. <laughs> that's, a, that's actually pretty good, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so during those last couple of sessions with you, my husband actually got really, really sick with COVID. So, um, and he's the one that usually does all the grocery shopping and the cooking and, oh, and helps with the horses. Nice. So I was doing the lot while I was working with you. So um, it was really challenging. But as I say, if you're really, really dedicated to your business, then you're just going to hoe in. And, th and that's what I did. And and the proof is in the pudding. It's no. Yeah, well, you have, you've had, like, you changed your website, we, you did, I mean, you worked so hard, and, and one of the things that we, we talked about and did was really about, you know, your, your talents around helping small business owners with brand yeah. photography, because of all the knowledge and the background that you've got. Before we jump into some of the things I want to talk about with brand photography today, do you want to tell people a little bit about you first? Can you tell people the thing you like doing in your lunch times? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I should doubt you. Now you're like, do I really want to tell people about this? <laughs> I, I, my husband says I have a big brain. Um, a big brain. And uh, yeah, so sometimes, and I have two two sides to my brain. One side is I really love the analytics of business and and um, and getting into seeing how things work and 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 stats, statistics, and that sort of stuff. The other side, I'm actually hugely creative with photography. And sometimes just to calm my mind, I will study nuclear physics in my lunch break just to give my brain a rest, which was meant to be an all-time secret, but you've just let yeah, the Yeah, just sorry about that. But it is funny, right? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I do. I, I like to study fun. that. And it's a good, like I think too, because you're, I'm imagining that like, you know, you've got your creative side with 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 photography, but a lot of it is not just creative. It's quite precise work as well when you're doing the editing phase and things like that. And I know you don't do all of that yourself, but you are overseeing some of that. And like, so I imagine that having a way to just kind of get your brain to almost relax out of that is to challenge it in a way that's very academic. And that's quite like, I understand that. It would be the same as someone doing a cryptic crossword. Yeah. Yeah, it's I think a little, that's bit, probably, a little bit know, more intense. It's a little bit more socially acceptable to do a cryptic crossword. <laughs> <laughs> uh, interesting fact: I cannot do cryptic crosswords. Oh, it okay. is a, there is a hack because I do so not have to do them either, but Rod does them, and him and Emily, my youngest, I love it that they'll often quite often on a Sunday. So Rod and I have a very nerdy habit which is we do the general knowledge crossword every week. We used to do it with my daughter, Rebecca. She's left home and it's just not the same without her, but we do it together. And then she, he and, and Emily will sit down on the couch and they'll do the crypto crossword together. And every now and again, I can get one, um, but they know the rules. And I think that makes different, you know, that makes a difference. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's, it is a different, it's like a trick. There's like trick codes in it that you've got to unravel. Um, so tell me a little bit about your photography background before we jump in. Now that I'm uh, your embarrassing hobby. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I've got I've got an interesting story. I um my I'm a third generation photographer. I'm actually really proud of that, that it's a family craft. So it's it's not just a job or something I picked up. I actually studied, so I have two degrees in photography. Um, I, I left home for a six-week holiday and didn't come home for 12 years oh, and, wow. did, yeah, and did two degrees in photography. Yeah, I know. <laughs> My poor mum. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know if I would have coped with that very well. So, yeah, you're mean to your mother. Yeah. I'll put that down on the notes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I... Uh, I, I, I specialized, I guess, while I was uh, in my two degrees in uh, studio portraiture. Mm -hmm. So people has always been a big thing. Um, I then, horses are also a huge part of my life. So I've ridden all of my life mm -hmm. and um, I have horses and I was uh, shoulder tapped by uh, Show Circuit magazine um, here in New Zealand to photograph for them. 
So I contract to them at times. It's really, really cool. I love working for them. Um, but I really, I, I kind of, I always say I had an adult job for a while um, because I didn't really want to, to do my, the whole business thing. So I just, you know, when I got home from overseas, I just wanted to, to chill out and just work for someone else. I didn't want the responsibility of a business. So I, I still photographed, but I didn't actually start a business until 2017, 1st of August, horse's birthday. Um, are, you gonna, are you gonna tell people what you were? Because I think it's quite hilarious that you went, I just did a real job, but you didn't like go and work in a shop, did you? Oh. <laughs> um, so I mean, come on, Kate, there's no time to, to hold back on here. <laughs> so I, I, I was a chef. <laughs> um, and I also worked in uh, the health and disability sector um, as a uh, manager. So yeah, yeah. So it was it was it was a real job. It was an adult job. So yeah, adult job. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting job. how we have to, especially if we're creative. There is this really interesting thing when we have this huge creative drive. It's not just the business, but there's almost this thing of, am I allowed to have permission to be in a job or? have a whole life built around something I adore and you kind of feel like you're doing something naughty I don't know did you feel that way um yeah I kind of feel like I don't work yeah I know and it makes that's where it's hard to value yourself I think like it's interesting yeah, I yeah. realize that that part of my my mindset around valuing what I do is when you love it you kind of feel like it's a bit naughty that you're asking to pay, be paid for it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm sure there's heaps of other small business owners out there that 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 feel the same way. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. I think the the job that I was in was very it was very intense. Mm -hmm. um, there's yeah, there's other areas that um, I can't kind of talk about, um, but. It was very, very intense, and and it had a it had an expiry date, and so I just came home one day and said, right, that's it, good, and here we are. That is exciting. That is very exciting. Um, I love that. So let's just talk about brand shoots. So let's just, in case no one knows what that is, what is a personal brand shoot? So a personal brand shoot is essentially. Rachel asked the question that she didn't tell Kate she was going to ask her and Kate's like I've taken so many good notes but did I take notes on this bit because <laughs> why did she ask me a question that she didn't warn me about Kate is the most organized person you'll ever come across I don't give questions to everyone but I knew I had to give questions to Kate and she will but she is so good she'll be so good at asking the questions but I forgot to tell her I will be asking questions that I did not have on the list <laughs> so funny this comes in all right, all right. Time to think. so here's here's how I would explain personal branding photography is that it's it's photography of you and your business and your brand and it's not for likes or more followers or to become famous it's the way that other people recognize you and remember you yes and, and I think that that's a really good way of explaining it. And I was thinking on the way in today when I was stuck in that traffic jam, um, I was thinking about how that if all else fails, because there are like a range of ways we can do some of some shoots that like we can show ourselves up on video. We can have like, you know, goofy, like in situ shots and daily shots, but those personal brand shoots can really elevate your brand. Um, and I was thinking, you know, like one of the things I think every business owner should do and invest is coming to someone like you for headshots. Because, you know, like, uh, and I don't want to out you here, Kate, but even like you as a photographer who's having to take your own photos, I said to you, okay, I need a photo for this. And you're like, okay, well, I have a couple of photos that we could go for. But having those photos ready for when you have got a story in the news, you've got a podcast, you've got to be on, um, someone asks for a thing for a testimonial or something like that. Having a group of up-to-date headshots, I think, is an essential thing for every business owner. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent, absolutely. So, um, I was featured on another podcast, um, and they <laughs> asked me for a headshot, and the only one I had 
not kidding you've seen this one yes, it's very um, cute. <laughs> was uh, me in a bunny suit with two big massive white teeth hanging out yes. the front underneath my lips um which was actually a portrait of my poor mother I did a my mother was a portrait of me I had greyhounds so I dressed as a bunny and put the greyhounds and I took these self-portraits of myself yeah anyway so your my poor, mom long-suffering mother man my poor mom I know <laughs> um, and so I gave her that as a portrait anyway that was all I had and I sent it to him and I thought yikes anyway he, he um he used it so there you go well, you so had really, to. I think I'm is, using it as well unless you've got a new photo that's it's either that one or the other one you did offer me one of you draped in a shower t shower curtain as well but I, I think I vetoed that one yeah yeah, yeah. no no that was that was uh but it is true you know like and you have to have them the, you have to have some landscape and some portrait and you have to have some that will fit in a square because that is like base regardless of the whole brand shoot and going out on location and choosing things and stuff like that you need to have investing in those is the best thing that you can do you can have them for your linkedin profile or your images you need some images that are really good that can just pick up and go and they shouldn't just be a selfie image they need to be something yeah yeah proper. yeah definitely they have to be I'm just talking to yourself right now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, they have to be lit very well yeah. so the lighting um because it's really important with headshots mm -hmm. um you know it is of your face so if you have horrible shadows and things all over your face you're going to look a bit it's just not oh, going to look right yeah older yeah. and yeah. Or, or stressed yeah. or tired or yeah. um yeah it's, it, you're right like the lighting i think that's one of the things that we really undervalue as important to get those shots right and you can tell people yes. that have just gone and got a snap outside compared to someone who is a professional photographer that's taken a photo of us outside has made sure that the lighting is right um and so I do I think that anything if anything that there is that it's important that would be the bare minimum um to get is to make sure you've got a good group of them and you do need to keep those updated that, that you know you know it's a problem for me because I lost a bit of weight last year and I had photos, but I have to, I've just kind of been holding off and waiting until I kind of stabilize because otherwise six months later, I'll go get some more. I'm almost at that stage. But having headshots make things a lot better. And I and I will tell people here, because I did lose like over 50 kg last year and I have a stuff column and every now and again, they put the old photo on and people don't recognize me. It doesn't look like me anymore. And that's a problem. And then even the one they've got now, which was from last Ju July, um, that also doesn't really look like me anymore either. And there is a real conflict. So it is really important to keep those updated if things change, if you go gray like I do or whatever it is to, you know, it is really important. That is an, I think everyone should have that in their marketing budget is to have headshots every year to every two years. Absolutely. Um, I was going to say that you beat me to it. But, oh, um, sorry, I was ranting. No, 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 no. <laughs> having them updated regularly because we do change mm. a lot yeah we do yeah. um some of us put on right <laughs> yeah well either way right I've done I've done that as well you know and and I think there is a pro it's like a, 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 like I wrote a book on internet dating it's like internet dating you know like if the photo really doesn't look like the person it's really hard which is another story completely because as you know as I moaned to the coaching group yesterday and then I said it to you we we're talking about what things can you say to people to other women that people, what other women secretly go bitch underneath and like because I was saying it to you because you've got this amazing straight thick hair that you basically can have in a bun and just pulls it out and just, it looks like it's had been straightened and I went bitch and then I said well that's what people said to me yesterday when I said I am way more photogenic on a camera than I am in real I look much better on a camera than in real life I hate you Rachel for that you know like I do think <laughs> it is it is one of those things but it's true guys like seriously I'm putting you up for if you see a photo of me I don't look as good as that in real life I'm just letting you know um if you see a bad one though that's probably fairly accurate um so okay so we've got we know we need to get the headshots in terms of the brand what's the difference between headshots and a brand shoot okay so with a headshot we're just taking photographs of sort of you know from the middle of your chest yeah. upwards it's just your head it's it's just your head that you can use on profiles that like for all the reasons yeah. linkedin um podcasts all that sort of stuff with a brand shoot we're going further we're going deeper we're looking at um 
a whole host of things, but mainly we're, we're doing a deep dive into your brand and what your brand values are, what your brand voice is, mm -hmm. um, who you are. Um, our personal brands are exactly that. Like the hint is in the title. It's personal. It's personal to each of us. So um, we deep dive into that in terms of the, and then we formulate a plan around where, when, how, what we're going to shoot that's going to bring your brand to life. Mm -hmm. Now that might look like um, drinking coffee. I mean, I'm sorry, but I find this a bit cheesy. Everyone's drinking coffee out of their favorite cup, um, sitting in a cafe <laughs> sort of thing. I, um, I have to say I've kind of got sick of those shots. I do think yeah, that's um, the thing, like yeah. th there is this challenge with this. That there are some shots that that are easy shots to get, like going to a cafe and having a photo of you laughing, holding your cup while there's a person that you're kind of talking to. And now when I see those, I actually think personal brand stock photo. In my head, I just go, stop photo. I'm not actually feeling like you're engaging with me as much because I just feel like it's on the list. And I know that's a challenge for photographers because when you're doing lots of photos, it's very easy to go, this is a great location or here's a great thing or here's some shots that you want to have that look like you're talking to a customer. Or, or there are those things you've got to do, but finding ways to do that in a different way, that's challenging. Yep, you've got to get creative. And that's yeah. where I think... What I like to do with people, whether I'm taking personal branding or portraits, is I like to actually get to know you. Mm -hmm. And I I have this amazing way of figuring out who you are pretty quickly and what I can get away with and what I can't get away with, right? Yeah. So then that will actually lead me in, in your shoot to sort of say, hey, how about we try this? Yeah. Oh, I've got an idea. How about we try this? So, um. Yeah, I I think I think that's where we we can miss a lot in personal branding photography is just doing the stock style ones. Whereas I think if we just think a little bit more outside the box and do something a little bit differently, um, we we as photographers can bring small business owners just that point of difference, yeah. you know. And to do that, I have to know about your brand voice and your values, your skills, your, um, you know, your personality, what, what, why you have the brand that you have. Yeah. What, what is it you're trying to do with your brand? What positivity are you trying to bring the world? What are yeah. you offering people? So I need to get to know that in order to then bring that out in the photographs. It's actually really hard to describe in words what how I do that do you know no I, I, I think that that's part though I think that's that's where when you're hitting someone's like genius or good parts the same with me when I try to explain how I can write you know a full brand story in 90 minutes when it would take most people seven sessions to do that like obviously I've done other work beforehand but you've seen me do it and I can go here it is and then I write or I was at a at the course I was at yesterday, I was running oh, a couple of days ago, I was running it and I just went, well, here's how I'd use your information in a, in a post. And I just rabbit it off. And the whole room went, <laughs> because I think that like your, your fluency in what you do, it's, you can't kind of break it down. Like, I think that's one of the reasons that it is all really easy. If we go back to that whole value thing, it's really easy for us to undervalue what we do when we become fluent and good in it, because we're just, it's, it's innate in us now. We've lost that feeling of, that first learning to drive moment, we've lost that in what we do. So it's very hard to break it down. Very hard to break it down. Yeah. So I totally get that. So let's just talk about values and brand voice in images though and different ways that we could potentially express that. Do you have examples or do you want me to give you some, like give you an idea and then you spitball with me? Uh, an example? Throw something at me. What, okay, what's, so what's say you are an accountant mm -hmm. who... Um, is a little bit shy so you're like quite a quiet person um, and so you're really worried you're going to come to a brand photography thing and be told that you've got to look really extroverted when you're not but you also want to show that you like people what would you do wow that's a good one? Glee, isn't it? I know I made you a hard one do you want me to give you an easier one first <laughs> <laughs> no 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 I like a good challenge yeah um it's in the way that I connect yeah. with the accountant, okay? So I know what it's like to be an introvert because 
regardless of me sitting here today talking to you, that's this podcast that's going to go everywhere. I am actually an introvert. Mm. Um, just look at what I do on my lunch breaks. Yeah. So, <laughs> Oh, you're going to get them to read some nuclear physics textbooks that make them feel comfortable. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I think that I I have a way of being able to relate to to that person. And and it's, it's been proven time and time again, I have women who come in for empowerment type um, sessions here in the studio and um, they come in and they are just so nervous and they have my hair and makeup we do their shoot and by the fourth outfit the last outfit they're just absolutely loving it Mm -hmm. and walk out the door five inches taller Mm -hmm. you know and and so for me I would sit um first of all we we always do a just I do a uh, discovery call with all our clients so we have a zoom like this Mm -hmm. and we talk about this stuff so I think that's really really important and we make a plan together Mm. of where we're going to shoot what we're going to shoot how we're going to shoot props all of that sort of stuff what they're actually wanting because if that accountant really does want that photograph in the cafe Mm. sipping on his coffee then I'm going to give him that I may try a couple of different things that's a Kate thing to do and quite often people like the Kate stuff but um but I think it's really important for me to really listen to you. So if you're an accountant, you're really shy, you're very introverted and you've got to get that point across, then I'm going to work with you. We're going to talk. Mm-hmm. It's very much the way you do things in terms yeah, of your... Yeah, probably is quite similar actually. And, and mm-hmm. you, I think you cope with it pretty well. Well done. Um, but okay, so so what about if someone was like wanting to do like really... Um, crazy stuff like so they want to show and you feel like they're going a little bit too crazy do you think there is such a thing as going too crazy um if they're wanting me to photograph them with a drone while they're you know sort of thing um where there's danger yeah I'll let them know that that's quite dangerous (laughs) um I have been known to lay underneath horse jumps while stallions wow. have jumped over the top of me in photographs. So um, I'm not, again, my mother had a fit. She, yeah, Someone she tagged me on Facebook and she saw it and I got a phone call. Um, my poor mother. And uh, <laughs> Renaming the podcast episode, Kate's poor mother, stories yeah. of a photographer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, look, I... I don't mind crazy. I don't mind a hell of a lot of crazy as a photographer. And yeah. I think any professional photographer won't will will actually yeah. listen to the client and work with it. So, you know, I have done some really crazy stuff with people. It's about what you want. Yeah. I need to hear what you want and then we formulate that plan and to pull particular. out the it's maximum exactly, plan. Yeah. It's exactly the same thing as I would do crazy. Yeah. With um accountant yeah because it, whatever you do with that account it's going to feel crazy to them anyway Correct. Right. So, so what are some things that if I was coming to do a brand shoot what are some things I need to think about before having a shoot like what are some things I need to have in a row for that discovery call but also before I turn up on the day okay I know you're prepared for this question I, I have I have Now, just to be clear, the reason I've written notes is because so much of this is just in my, it's just so automatic. So I wanted to make sure I had information. Um, Okay, so for before a shoot, I'm going to want you to think about your brand clarity. Okay. So we need to get some brand clarity. Um, And again, that is... What are you, what's your purpose, your values, your strengths, your skills, your interests, your personality? Um, and, and understanding that it's, it's very personal to you. Mm. Then we need to think about what you're going to wear. Now, that is the biggest thing I get asked in every form of, whether That's it be interesting. equestrian, whether it be portraits, whether it be you know, I'm going to be in a photo with, I'm going to have dog photos, but I'm going to be in a photo with my dog. What do I wear? It's just, yeah, it's a big, it's a big issue. 
Um, we're going to create a shot list. So you need to think about what kinds of images you need. Do you need headshots? Do you need um, images for Facebook cover, for LinkedIn, for, you know, any of your social media? Do you need it for a blog? Do you need it for your website? We Those need are to... good questions because I do think that one of the things is easy to do on a shoot is take a whole lot and then go, oh, shit, I forgot this type of photo. And I guess that's why that whole like being in a cafe thing I can see why that's like a tick because it's kind of like I need one there I look relaxed in my happy place I need one where it feels like I'm in a group of people but I, you know and, and if you don't have an office it can be quite a good place to do that sort of stuff yeah, yeah. Um, but it might be you could add something that's more of who you are to that mm. yeah yeah exactly yeah um, and then I we always talk about hair and makeup yeah and then any props or location, the location that you're going to shoot. Can we go at? back to hair and makeup in a few for a bit. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of things here. Like I know that you supply hair and makeup as an extra for people who want it. Um, but one of the things I do think is really important here, and I know people say, is that it's kind of really important. Like your photos will look a little bit more than you are, but they couldn't shouldn't look so much more that it doesn't look like who you would be if you turned up in a meeting. Mm. Would you agree with that? Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. Um, uh, Let me, um, who is our hair and makeup artist here in house, um, is brilliant. So, how she would do your hair and makeup for a personal branding shoot mm. would be completely different yeah. than how she would do it for, Glad say, a, to a portrait mm. session where we were building a dress on your body in the yeah. studio. Um, okay. Very, very different. And um, we she's she's really good I I never actually had to train her in this because she is professionally trained um but she will actually she'll do one part of the makeup and she'll stop and she'll ask you how you feel get you to have a look at it I like that so the our clients have that input the whole way through and if they don't like something she'll wipe it off yeah and start again because I will just say for everyone really that's listening, as someone who's done quite a lot of brand shoots, but also done quite a lot of work for magazines, like being in magazines, a brand shoot for hair and makeup is quite different to say if you're going to be the cover or be a feature mag in a feature article. When they come and do you and take your photos, you often do not like do not look anything like yourself. And that is different. You can use these photos for magazine photos and they will always say yes to them but it is a different look. And and often I have heard from women who go, I spent, you know, at, you know, 1300 bucks, a thousand, whatever it is on brand photos. And I really love the way I look in them, but I don't use them because they don't feel like me. And so I think getting your hair and makeup sorted is really important. And then the other thing around outfits, what would you recommend people wear for a brand shoot before we talk about props? So your outfits, um, are really important and there's a whole list of things that I could run through first and foremost you have to have to have to be comfortable yeah so and you, you have to be comfortable feel... in your body right yeah yep so us as women we when our hair is fabulous and we feel we like our makeup and we've got clothes that fit us really well and we and we feel comfortable we grow five inches in height. Yeah. We are so confident. And that's the place I want to photograph you. That's that's the place, okay? So, okay, hair and makeup, we work with, um, you know, with that. And, and it makes me deeply, deeply sad to hear people say exactly what you said. Yeah. It doesn't look like me. And that's because they haven't had that, or maybe they didn't have that opportunity to say actually my makeup's a bit too extra yeah you know? or maybe they haven't they don't they it feels so good like to have it go on because you're like I feel like I'm indulging myself but when you look back on it you go oh that's not quite how I should be yeah. um and I think the other thing around that kind of comfort thing is I would just say to those of you that have businesses where you work from home and you might actually often spend quite a bit of time secretly working in active wear and things like that it's good to dress up for your shoots but it's also really good to show the real active wear side too because people like that reality so the photographer will still make you look get, get the right angles for you in your active wear but have a mix like have a mix of different looks I think is really important don't I I definitely um 
I, I know you know all, all this stuff anyway, Kate, but for me, one of the things I do because I run events is I um, used to very carefully choose what clothes I would be having in my shoots because I knew that those would be the clothes that I'd often wear at my events. And I would just have like five or six different outfits that I had on a cycle from when I was speaking somewhere. And the brand um, connection from that was so powerful because people were like, I don't just recognize your face. I recognize that dress or I recognize that outfit. And so consciously thinking about how, and, and, and I want to say that from a marketing perspective, it's clever, you know, choose colors that fit your brand yes. colors. Yes. You know, yes. make it something that means that every time you use those images, it's so yeah. easy for it to slide in and slot in with what you're doing. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I always say as well, solid colours, mm -hmm. stay away from patterns, logos, you know, the, you know, if you are going to wear the active wear, don't, don't, you know, have the don't big have, Nike. Yeah, that, don't have Nike on um, it, yeah. Yeah, d stay away from that because that takes away from your, um, so what people will do is they will, if they see a logo, the eye will go to the logo and recognize that. We don't want that. We want them to see you. We don't want them to see Nike. So this is not advertising Nike. Yeah, we're not marketing mark Nike. We're advertising you. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, patterns and prints and things like that, that will make your images date very quickly. Mm. So solid, solid if you can. And layer. Wear layers, you know, layers look really good. Um, shoes, I think is really, when, you, when you're choosing your shoes, I think you need to choose what's comfortable. Yes, high heels make elongate the body and make the legs look longer. If we're doing a full shoot and we're doing it in the studio, then that's perfectly fine. If you're having a full, full body length, you know, down at, I don't know, the cafe, definitely um but if you're going into the forest and we're not going to be photographing your feet then I would say just wear your joggers yeah I definitely um, am a big fan of using joggers anyway or, or sneakers hmm. because I am using your Australianism um because I I do think that also um it goes back to that whole feeling comfortable in front of the camera a lot of people hmm. wear clothes or shoes that they don't feel comfortable because they think they look beautiful but then you have a tension on your face because you're trying to balance or you're trying to like suck your tummy in to make your pants feel right or whatever. And actually, you know, there's a real liberation in wearing clothes that fit you right and feel comfortable and shoes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yep, so, absolutely. So let's go back to props. Um, so Can I just say something about yeah. polo necks? I oh, want to yes, say okay. something about polo necks. <laughs> this is your <laughs> Okay, tell me about polo necks. So I wear polo necks to a branding shoot. I love polo necks, but you know what? They're not for branding shoots. What actually happens is you it makes you look like you're just a head on a blog. Oh, it does, doesn't it? You need to, you need to show that you have a neck, a neck, okay? Um, <clears throat> also, um, just be very wary of showing too much skin. Mm. Um Often a photographer, like I will ask you to pose in different different ways and you're going to move your body and you're going to feel uncomfortable. And we just, you know, I don't want you to, if you're in public, feel like you're, you know, flashing anything. So just be wary that you might go into lots of different positions. And so just make sure you've got things just covered. Make sure you've done like the lean forward sync test and make sure nothing pops out as you lean forward. Correct. Yeah, um, I do. Actually, I actually do that when I'm before I'm speaking anywhere. As I always make sure I. I mean, I don't mind if I'm wearing a low, lower cut or V-neck top, but I'm just more. I do always do a lean forward just to check that I'm not accidentally going to be opening yep. my entire top up and showing everyone my belly button. It's just like a weird thing. It's not like a modesty thing. It's just more a you don't want to detract from what you're doing, and sometimes it can make an issue. Well, I also don't want you to feel embarrassed in yeah. public. You know, if you are having your photograph taken in public, wearing um, outfits in your brand shoot that you wear out in public is very, very smart. Yeah. In actual fact, I had that thought this morning because this pink top that I put on, I only got just this morning, I put this pink top on. This is the pink top that I shoot in. Well, I have several of them. It's, it's clever, yeah, wearing stuff that fits with your branding <laughs> and wearing it all the time, yeah. It does not suit my branding, but the reason I wear it is if I'm meeting someone in public, I can say, look for me, 
I have the bun on top of my head. I have the big glasses and I have the bright pink shirt. Yeah. And so people can find me easily in public, but I don't have any of the pink shirt on my website. So now I've got to go and take you a photo. You should do some of, yes, that would be a very uh-huh. good idea, Kate. Um, okay. Um, we're almost, we, we've, we've um, almost out of time, but I want to ask you about props. So you mentioned props before. What kind of props can people have in a photo shoot? Like what would be some ones that you think like would be quite generic ones, I guess, first that would be useful to have? So generic would be your laptop, your your notepad, um, anything that you use, your phone. Um, for me, that would be camera, you yeah, know, definitely. Or cameras. Um, but I think it, if you think further than that, it's like, yeah, microphone for... Um, <laughs> yeah, for a podcast. This one's an, I'm sorry, for a, you can't see the video, I just put up an inflatable microphone. Um, I have a lot of props in the video, so um, I have crowns. I, I like using props because I think it brings out the playfulness, but that's kind of my brand. But I do think, yeah, thinking about like laptop, phone, pieces of paper so that you can have text on it for later if you want to. Are you, why are you laughing? That big microphone that was massive. I know it's awesome. I I do like I do like the videos with it where I do like pretend faking that I'm doing rock rock singing. That's amazing. Oh my and gosh! I wish, but it makes me relax. Like here. having having props in here, like hat or oh, even hats. Like there'll be another thing. Having hats, having hats. silly glasses if you're that sort of person. Like having yep. things that can kind of because even if you're not planning to use them. Like I, I had one where I did a feather boa and they became like the best photos I had because I was goofing around. I had funny glasses, feather boas. People freaking love those photos and they were there actually to help me relax, but they actually brought something out of me that I couldn't see before. That's really cool. That's actually um, something that I've never heard anyone say, but that's actually cool. I've learned that. Now I'm going to ask my client, bring something that makes you relax. Yeah, I think it's to have fun and we'll take some funny shots. We won't necessarily use them, but you can have them to kind of go, that was funny. I had fun and it just, but it did. It made me just go, actually, this was great. And, And I will tell you that the first time I got brand photos and I saw them, I went, oh God, I look disgusting. And I was so mortified. Like I liked some of them, but a lot of them were bad. And I took the worst one that I'd got where I looked like I was like juggling invisible something or others and posted it in a group. And the whole group went, if I saw this photo as my as your brand photo, I would hire you on the spot. Wow. Because they said it showed so much personality and hilariousness. And then someone someone um, laughed and did um, um, photoshopped a whole lot of eggplants and looked so it looked like I was like juggling these big eggplants. We don't know what eggplant stands for. Um, juggling yeah. these big eggplants. <laughs> Um, with this look on my face and it was funny and then it became a meme and they're all doing it in the group but it made me realize too that everyone's so used to the kind of you know arms crossed the pointing the smiling and those other candid ones are the ones that actually make your brand shoot photos special absolutely it's it's your shoot it's it's all about your personality um and I I will bring that out of you and I will go with it um you find that once people once people just put a little toe over that line, yeah, then you've got them, and then and then they can relax. Yeah. So I think I think that's I think that's amazing. Now I did forget to say that because we didn't actually say where you're from, Kate, because you do have an Australian twang. No, I'm actually a Kiwi. Oh, you are Kiwi, but you have lived in Australia. I have. Yeah. Yes. So, I but did. where are you based? So, so if people want to get hold of you, yeah. and work with you where are you based? I am in Palmerston North in the Manawatu. I do, for any Auckland people, I do travel. Mm. Um, so I, I, I have have the, the means to bring my studio with me and lighting and whatnot. But I am based in Manawatu. This is, this is yeah, this is and, home. Um, and you are. We're, we're going to have you come up to, um, to Auckland for some of my clients and people in the Mapit Marketing community to do some headshots. Um, yes. over a couple of days but yeah so um, it's been a real pleasure having you on and so if people want to find you on um, online where do they go so on instagram we are avidon photography nz i think yeah nz uh facebook avidon photography and our website is avidon.co.nz a-e-d-o-n yes yes 
Yes. All right, so thank you so much for being part of the podcast. It was so helpful and useful. And I know that lots of people will be thinking, I need definitely need to get headshots and I probably need to read books and brand photos and try and get ones that are less generic. I think, you know, sitting down and really thinking about what you need to communicate before you do it. And that's what you do in a discovery course. So important because then you get the shots you want. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, and thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks, Rachel. It's oh, been and, awesome. And being a great client. <laughs> thank you for being a good coach oh. <laughs> i hope you enjoyed this episode of Mapit marketing remember to check out our free events across new zealand if you're new zealand based go to eventbrite and search under identify marketing or you'll be able to find a link in the show notes to register across that way if i there is not a place there that is close to you and you'd love to have one do drop me a line if you can help me get people to it i'm keen to come and see you and i'd love to meet some of you face to face so if you do listen to the podcast and come to an event do come and say hello. I'm always incredibly socially awkward when you do it, but I do love it. Right, here's some takeaways. Please do make sure you have your headshots, consider brand photos, and if you like the way that Kate talked and you think, hey, you know I need to use her, give her a go. Otherwise, there's heaps of other really great ones closer to you. Go search them out, find a great brand photographer and get those brand phot photos done. They really do make a difference and I'm due to get some too, so I'll be joining you. Have a great week and I'll talk to you next week. Oh, and next week it's me and I'm talking to you about something that's very close to my heart. Talk to you then. If you love what you heard today, be sure to hit subscribe. And if you love this episode in particular, I'd love it if you shared it on social media. Remember to tag me in so I can say thank you. Have a great week and we'll talk soon.